be respectful on time. Microphones need to include full name and say she needed eyes on me. <laughs> they really are twins, aren't they? <laughs> that was perfectly in sync. Nice job. All right. And how about Emmy for the calendar? Emmy, do you want to do the calendar? Okay. Wednesday, May 14th. Wednesday. 24, 20, 23. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. And of course, we're just going to review the calendar for a moment. And that is. Look, 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 we're almost there. The last day of school is the 26th. Oh my goodness, it goes so fast. Most of you have already finished your coursework. So congratulations. And, and a bigger thank you for continuing to come to the live lessons. Who is our Who are our weekly spotlight friends? We have Ruby for our awesome Zoom Promise Keeper, Isaac for amazingly detailed responses, and Feruza for working hard. So, and if you're just joining us, um, I put the Nearpod link in the Zoom chat. Now, what are we doing next? Oh, today we're going to talk about key details. Hi, Asa. Hi, Marbing. It's in the Zoom chat. Zoom chat. Check the Zoom chat for our Nearpod link. Our key details support the main idea, the theme. They help you retell. There's so many reasons why we need key details. Imagine trying to tell a story and leaving out all the details, all the important things that happened. Once upon a time, there were three things and another thing, and they, the end. <laughs> That's a terrible story, isn't it? <laughs> so key details help support, tell information, and help you understand what's happening and, you know, help you answer questions for comprehension. All right, guys, you know what happens. Let's just have a little bit of fun. What happens when we don't think while we read? <sighs> well, we start thinking about other things. That's happened to me. Sometimes I'm reading. And I'm thinking about, hmm, what are we going to have for dinner? Hmm, what am I going to do next week? Hmm, I wonder what happened when, mm hmm. So when you stop and you let your brain wander or think about other things, then you're going to lose comprehension, right? You won't be able to figure out words. So train your brain now to stay focused, pay attention, ask questions. <laughs> Remember the ask questions? Who wants to read the W questions? There they are. Where, when, who? Asa, go for it. Where, when, who, what, why, how? Wonderful. Those are excellent. Thank you very much. Those are our question words. You ask that throughout the text you read. I don't, it doesn't matter whether it's a fictional text or a nonfiction text. You still have to ask questions, and I know you do. Remember when you were just a little toddler? But why? You used to ask your mom. Do you still do that? Do you? Do you still say, well, why, mommy? Why, daddy? Yeah. <laughs> Those are questions that we ask to understand the world around us. We can use them when we read. So, and then it helps us with comprehension, understanding, helping figure out words and answering questions at the end and a retell. Okay, so there's our questions. Let me move on. Oops, I lost somebody, but I'm going to meet you over in the near pot, okay? We're going to read a cute little story and discuss how to find our key details. Okay, the name of the title is tall enough. Can I point out the level? The level says 580. Do you know what that is? That's the end of second grade, beginning of third grade reading. What does that mean to us? That means probably more words, maybe some new um, vocabulary words. Mm, maybe it has more dialogue. Mm. Maybe it has more inferencing. So 
not really harder, just a little bit more of everything you know. How's that? Okay. So don't panic. <laughs> this is right where you need to be. And it says this lesson is designed for students, hi Addy, for students to practice reading comprehension skills in class or in small groups. Students can complete the practice portion in pairs or on your own or with your learning coach. And then let me see. Okay, let me skip forward. The question of the day, our essential question is why are key details important, especially when we're reading literature? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to cook pancakes. No, 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 no. Identify and discuss key details in a text. Describe how characters in a story respond. That's how they act. That's what they do, okay, to major events and challenges. So think about that for a moment. Um, you, can, you can make a connection to your own life while you read this. How would I have responded? What would I have done? Think about those types of questions to make connections. Oh, we have another friend coming. Let's start off the class today visiting a setting. A setting? What's a setting? Who knows what a setting is? A setting is, oh boy goodness, Mackenzie, your hand was so fast. A setting is where or when? When, when the story takes place. Yeah. Fabulous. Yes, it's exactly right. It could be where or it can be when. Yeah, because you could see like uh, back back when the dinosaurs roamed the land. That helps you understand the setting. Or last week, my mom, you know, helps you understand. That's part of the setting, when and where. Oh, what are we doing? Field trip. Field trip, take a walk around. If you are just joining us, the Nearpod link is in the Zoom chat. And as you walk around, ask, start asking yourself the questions. Who? What? Where? Why? How? Huh? <laughs> I wonder if bats live in there. I wonder. Oh, look at that. Look at that sign. Ah, a connection. I've seen those signs. Those signs are posted. I, I know I've seen. Where have I seen them? Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Um, they These are like historical signs where something happened there. And they tell what happened in that location. Oh, cool. So I wonder what happened here. Are right, you guys ready? Think about that setting. Where do you think it was? What time of day was it? When and where? When and where? Type a response in to show me what you understand. Hi, Isaac. Where the setting was. And when it was. See if I have any responses. Marbing? Marbing. Um uh can I just say it? Okay. Are are you in though? You're in though, right? Yeah. We'd love to see your answer posted. Um, yeah, but is there another way instead of, you know, like typing? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, do you need help spelling? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I need help spelling too. No, it's that when, um, uh, this happens all the time when I need to, you know, like write something very long. Yeah. What happens? And your yeah. arm runs out the window. Your pen grows wings and flies out the door. Your paper eats the pencil. I totally get it. No, I know. So go ahead. Share with me what you were going to say. So um, I looked down. And why is there a circle saying a bunch of weird numbers and words? Mm, that's right. It was like a, it was like a little, um, oh, if you look straight down, 
that might have been the camera. I'm not sure. But do you do you want to tell me where you think it was? Someone said a farm. Do you think it was a farm? Was it was it a historical place? Did it look like a church? A house? Mm -hmm. What do you think it was? Well, I did see a weird looking house that looks like um a pentagon. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Marbing. I'm going to put you back on mute. Okay, honey pie. Uh, oh, you did it. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Asa, what did you say? I said country and morning. Wonderful. It did look like the country. You're right. There wasn't no busy streets or skyscrapers. I like that idea that it was somewhere in the country and it looked like it was morning time. Ava McKenzie said the setting was outside and the buildings were made of wood. Yep, I saw that too. Very different from current ways that they build, right? They don't build the same way anymore. Okay, guys, we're moving on. Setting is one of the key details. Ah. Uh -huh. On the next slide, we're going to read this long story, but by the way, I'm going to read it to you, um, but I would like you to read along, and this is just to speed it up a little bit, okay? Sometimes when I let Nearpod read, it takes forever, so I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to go a little faster so we can get through the entire text. Okay. When you practice this on your own, you are welcome to read it all by yourself. This is called Tall Enough. Remember, this is level 580, which is end of second grade, beginning of third grade. Knees and noses. That's how Andy Benny saw adults. <laughs> Knees when he looked straight ahead. Noses when he looked up. He was that short. One Saturday, Andy's great aunt Arlene from Tupelo, Mississippi visited. When his mother left the room for coffee and cookies, Andy began telling Auntie about his pet turtle. The great lady's knees ignored him. <laughs> she continued her conversation with his mother, her words flapping over Andy's head into the kitchen. Andy stood on a chair so he and his aunt could see each other. At the same time, his mother came back. Okay, quick. Why did he stand on the chair? Emmy? To get taller. To get taller? Was he noticing something was happening when he was too short? It was nice. No one was listening. Very good. Exactly. So it's, it'd be like an ant, um, like a little tiny crawling ant trying to get your attention. You just don't even see it. Okay, good work. Let's move on. Connection, though. Have, has that ever happened to you? <laughs> Andrew Wilson Benny, she said, you know better than that. Andy jumped from the chair. Being short is the pits, he muttered as he stomped down the hallway to his bedroom. If knees had ears, what? This, oh wait, this world would be a better place, he flopped onto his bed. A wooden box full of train cars and tracks caught his eye. If he stood on something, he would be taller right away. Andy scrambled from his bed and spilled the train set across the floor. Okay, okay, quick, I have a question. Why did they yell at Andy? Why'd they yell at him? Asa? Because he was standing on the chair. <gasps> that, that's right. He thought he would solve his problem, but it became a problem, didn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. So is he going to try to go fix his problem? Let's see. All right. I'm predicting. I think I know what's going to happen. Predictions help us understand the text as well, even if they're not right. He lugged 
the empty box into the kitchen, set it upside down and stood on it. His father sat at the table reading recipes in a cookbook. Look, Dad, I'm tall, Andy said. Terrific, his father said without looking up. <laughs> Tell you what, you go be uh, tall outside while I whip up some dinner for our guest. <laughs> did, did Dad, it said, look in the words, it said, without even looking up. So what, what does that mean? Did dad notice him or not? Isaac? Addy? Isaac? Oh, Isaac's coming. Hold on, I, Addy. Hold on. Isaac. Did dad even notice him? According to the text? I, I tried to get the new car. Okay, it's okay. Here, let me give it to you. But you can see my screen, right? Are you listening to the story? Okay, Addy, did his father notice him when he stood on the box? He did not notice him. That's right. And and worse yet, he shooed him outside. He's like, you know what? Go be tall somewhere else. You're bugging me, kid. Go. <laughs> wow, that poor child. Must be hard to be that short. Andy shrugged, jumped off the box, carried it outside, and climbed back on. He reached his hands toward the clouds in the sky and felt he nearly touched their feathery bellies. He laughed aloud as he pretended to tickle them. Patches, the Benny's ginger and white kitten, came out from under the bushes and meowed. Can't scratch your ears today, Andy told Patches. I'm being tall. <laughs> Patches flicked her tail and stalked away. Andy spotted a hairy black and yellow caterpillar inching its way across the ground. He considered taking a closer look until he remembered he was being tall. He sighed <sighs> as the caterpillar disappeared into his father's garden. What now? His toys lay scattered in the sandbox, but he was too tall to play with them. Perhaps he might be a statue? Andy balanced on one leg and nearly toppled over when his mother hurried out the back door toward him. Okay, let's talk about these key details. Key details. Hey, twins, when you read through that, was there things that he couldn't do while he was being tall? Did they talk about things that they could not do? He couldn't be tall. Like he was trying to get people's attention and they weren't like talking to him. And yeah. They weren't being very nice. That's right. On the page before, but on this page, he's tried to do some things out in his backyard. I kind I kind of remember him saying he can't do them because he's being he's tall. tall. Yeah, so if he what, was shorter, then he couldn't do them. What yeah. were some of the things in the text that said, I can't do those, I'm being tall. Let me go, let me try a friend while you guys look, look through it, and I'm going to try Emmy, okay? Emmy, and then Addie. Emmy, what did you notice? I noticed that, well, that he's just trying to be tall. He's trying to be tall, and he's so tall, he can't do certain things anymore. What things can't he, he do? He can't, like, play. <gasps> That's right. He yes. can't play in the sandbox. Do you remember that? He Where pet, was that? He can't pet his cat. He can't pet his cat. Okay, hold that thought. Thank you. Addie, do you remember something else? Yeah, yeah he couldn't see the caterpillar because he was so tall. He should have got <laughs> off the box and saw the caterpillar. That's right. He wanted to take a closer look, but he was way too tall. Couldn't even get down far enough to see the caterpillar. Thank you, guys. Hey, twins, coming back to you. What did you notice? He couldn't reach his toys because he was too tall on the box. So if he got off the box, then he was able to reach his toys. If he didn't, then he wouldn't be able to reach his toys. Yeah, because some shelves can be really low and you can't reach them if you're so tall. 
Exactly. Are you guys starting to predict or infer what's going to happen next? Let's see. He, the, uh, it, there was a little boy. He was so short. People were ignoring him. He thought of a solution to get tall. And now that he's so tall, some things are happening that he's maybe not able to do anymore. Can you kind of predict what's going to happen? Is he going to learn a lesson, perhaps? Yeah, well, I think you guys know what it is. Let's find out. Oh, wait. Go back. Miss Cruz, you went too fast. <gasps> Hold on. Sorry. Always click the wrong arrow. It's the arrow on the bottom, not the arrow on the top. Hold on. Here it is. I found it. Okay. So the ant was telling him, get down, get down. But then he went out. Tried to show his dad. His dad said, no, go outside and play. He got, he was tall outside, but then he wasn't able to do the fun things he was usually able to do. And now let's go read on. Hi, mom, Andy said brightly and stood up straight. Hi, Andy. You okay? I'm tall, he announced, <laughs> looking up well beyond his mother's knees and seeing her face, not just a nose. Great, she said. I'm going to, I'm going out with Auntie. We won't be long. She left him there, taller, but not any happier. Andy frowned. Guys, show me your frown. Hmm. Several raindrops splashed on his head. Might as well go inside, he told himself. Then his sister Alicia came around the corner of the house and shouted at him. Patches ran into the drainage pipe and won't come out. Uh-oh. Andy jumped from the box and followed Alicia to the driveway, where his father stood peering into the pipe. Show me a peering look. Peer. Peering into the pipe. Good. Andy got down on his hands and knees and had a look. There was Patches. Patches stared back at him, wide-eyed and meowed. Wow. She'll come out when she gets hungry, his father said. Hmm. Okay, we have a new problem. Patches is stuck in the drain. Hmm. Can you predict what'll happen? Oh, look at that. He, this was back when he was talking to his mom before she went out. Do you remember that? Pictures can give us clues as well. It's starting to rain, Alicia wailed. I want my kitty now. Andy stood to his full height. I can get her, Dad, he said. His father hesitated. All right, uh, okay, but be careful. Andy dropped to his belly and stretched into the opening. Here I come, Patches, Andy told the kitten. Hurry, Alicia shouted. Andy reached Patches and gently picked her up with both hands. I've got her. Alicia took Patches from him. His father put a hand on his head. That was good work, Andy. Yeah, Andy agreed. I was the right size to do it. He grinned up at his father's nose and hugged his knees. <laughs> Afterward, Andy refilled his tall box with trains and car, train cars and tracks, scratched Patches behind the ears, and spent considerable time studying an ant colony. He was happy with that. Wow, what a cool story. All right, guys, there's the last picture. Hmm, and I have some questions. The who, the what, the where, the why, my favorite, the why. Why was Andy able to climb into the drainage pipe to save the cat. Yeah, Addy, Addy, go ahead. Because he was short and small like the pipe. That's right. No one else was able to climb in. So did you think he learned a lesson? Mm-hmm. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's move on. Let's practice. Uh, by the way, we're, we're just going to do a few activities to see if you understand the key details and how they support the main idea and or the lesson 
that was taught in the story. Now that you've finished reading, it's time to practice using key details, describing the characters, the setting, the problem, and of course, the solution. First, you will answer questions about the key details. Then you will use that information to fill in a story map. And I'm just gonna show you the map, okay? But you can work on it on your own. And that story map will you fill in to show the characters, the setting, the problem, and solution. And at the very end, we'll take a quiz. What's a problem? Who wants to read the problem? What is a problem? Hmm. Okay, okay. I saw, I saw Addie. Go for it. A problem is something. A problem is something that needs to be solved. It is something that does wrong in the story. That's exactly right. We have problems every day and we have to have solutions to fix those problems, right? And that happens in many fictional texts as well. If you, almost every story you read has a problem. Think about that. And then that's what makes it interesting, right? If you wrote a story, your characters might encounter a problem. And then you can show how they solve, they solve it. So, so the solution is the way it's been solved or fixed. Problem, solution. Okay, so we have a quick question. And of course, it says, who is Andy's cat? And what is her name? If you go back into, dive back into the text to find the answer, you won't go wrong. Who was Andy's cat? Just tell the name. See if you can find it. it. Wasn't Pickles. It wasn't Marbing. What was the name of the cat? Patches! Emmy got it! Yay! Where is that? If you open it up, I can see it right here. Patches! Yep, and by the way, going back into the text, you'll find the correct spelling of it too. That's another good reason to go dive back in to find the answers. Patches, 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 very good. Okay, guys, no more time for this one. Yep, patches is right, let's move on. Okay, next question, or next, next activity, it's thinking. Where, oh, draw a picture of the setting. Now, wait a minute. There were several settings, but where did most of it happen? Where did most of the events of this story occur? Was it in his living room? Was it in his room? Was it even inside? Was it outside? Was it on the top of a mountain? Where was it? Show me the setting. Very quick picture. Very quick. Yes. Oh, good. I can tell you guys are thinking most of the events happened outside. Yeah, in his backyard or somewhere in his yard. Very nice. I think the green gives it away, right? We know that screen grass. Look at that tree Ace is drawing. You can tell. Look at the sunshine. I love it. All right, so we know we know the characters. We know the cat's name. He was actually part of the story. Without patches, we don't have any problem or solution. So he was part of the problem. And then we knew the rest of the characters. We knew the setting. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Next. When does it start to rain? Go back in the story, dive back in, find when, whoa, 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 when did it start to rain? Oh, I found it. Marbing, when did it start raining? I'm looking in the text right now. Oh, I love that answer. Mm-hmm. Yep. When he was outside. 
Yeah, totally. I get it, Emmy. Awesome. When he was outside, it started to rain. It wasn't when he was inside. When he was outside being tall. <laughs> or you can actually say when the cat got stuck, too. But it was at some point when he was outside, it started to rain. Very good. Okay, and five. And by the way, where is that in the story? Let's see. I'm going out with Auntie. She left him outside, and that's when it started to rain. Andy frowned. Several raindrops splashed on his head, and he thought about going inside, it said, but then his sister came running around to say the cat was stuck. Okay, beautiful. Next, and sticks thing. Next thing. Let's go faster. We're almost done. What does Andy use to become taller? Oh, how fast can you draw? There were two instances that he made himself taller. Do you remember both? These are key details. It's important that we understand what he tried to do to make himself taller. A box and a chair, a box and a chair. Absolutely. Very good. It was a chair inside he got yelled at. It was too dangerous. And a box outside, his train box. Guys, uh, somewhere in a corner, how old do you think Andy was? Just take a guess. How old do you think he was? Write a number. Four. Ooh. Ah, I can see that. Three, yep. Three, very nice. I see it in our chat. Four, yep. Five, oh, it could have been five. Yeah, so right around those ages. That's a good guess, guys. I would infer the same thing. Why does Andy want to be taller? Is he tired of what? If you go back in the text, <laughs> he's so short. What happens? He's so short. Yeah, <laughs> all I can see her knees. <laughs> oh, that's pretty short. Oh, people were ignoring him so he can get attention. Very good. He's too short, says Addy. That's right. All those answers. And we can remember those from the story because it said, if he looks straight ahead, he's looking at somebody's knees. And if he looks up, he just looks into their nose. Ew. And then no one was paying attention to him. Beautiful. All right, guys, you are rocking this. How does Andy save peaches? Aw. Be the artists. How does Andy save peaches? Please draw. Explain your answer. If you forget, dive back into the text. Oh, I remember now. Drop to his belly and stretched into the opening. Gently picked her up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, look at the drainage. Wow, Addy, that's really good. You could see him crawling into the pipe. By the way, never do that on your own, please. Storm drains are very dangerous in Florida. So never, ever, ever, ever go into a storm drain. Okay. Awesome. That's why I know it's fiction. Because in real life, he could have gotten very hurt. Raise your hand if you think the cat would have come out later on. No? What if you had put a little can of cat food? Would he have come out? <laughs> Some people say yes. Some people say no. All right. Guys, moving on. These are connections that you make based on your prior knowledge. You're like, hmm, how else could we have solved that problem? Who, what, when, how, where, why? 
These are questions we use when we're reading. Are we going to do this part? No, I just wanted to show it to you. This is a story map. This is something you should have. We've talked about this before. There's all different kinds of story maps that you can print out or create on your own. If you fill them out while you read, you have a better chance of understanding what's happening and being able to answer questions about the text. Okay, now it says story map, so that must mean it's a fictional map about literature, fake fictional stories. So we're not going to scribble on it, but I do want you to consider using those in third grade, having a stack of them empty. Here's a quiz so that you can fill out as you read. Who's the main character of the story? Quick, pick your answer. Is it Alicia, Andy, Peaches, Dad? Next question. What does Andy use to be taller? Super boots, peaches, his toy box, tree. What are super boots? Why does Andy want to be tall? He thinks people will pay attention to him. B, he wants to be a giant. C, he wants to save all the cats in the world. D, he thinks it will help with his schoolwork. Hmm, don't come up with any old answer. Think about what the text said. What, what is Peaches? What is Peaches? A box, a toy, a song, or a cat? Last question. Why can Andy go into the drainage pipe? A, Peaches asked him to go. <laughs> B, he was small enough. C, he fell into it. He fell inside of it. D, he grew very tall. Mm, we have to go back to two. What's wrong? Oh, oh, something happened with number two. Can we go back and look? Because something's wrong. I think I didn't make the quiz. So let's go check and see. What, what does Andy use to be taller? Oh, it's supposed to be his toy box. Mm-hmm. So whoever made this quiz marked the wrong answer. If you got C, you definitely got it right. So no worries. No worries. This should have been C. You're right. Look how many greens. You guys are so ready for third grade. If you can read that story on your own and answer all the questions on your own, then you should feel very confident. Draw an illustration of how a character solved the problem. No. Can you do me a favor? Don't draw, the, don't draw this. Make a connection. Draw a picture of you having a problem and figuring out how to solve it. Think, think for just a second. What's something that happened to you? A personal narrative. Twins, go ahead. It says we got C wrong, but I think it was yeah. Oh, like, you didn't it hear. Said you, we got C yeah. wrong. I know, I know. I uh, did you hear me explain? Did you hear me explain? I didn't make the quiz, and it kind of yeah. must have messed up. Don't worry about it. C is right. Okay. Now, so this one, just draw. Think about a personal narrative, something that happened to you a problem that happened to you and how you solved it. So let's see, I have to think for a second about what I did. Oh. Any kind of problem you might've had. Mm. Mm. I know one time I got stuck in my grandpa's bathroom, the door locked. It was an old fashioned door and I got stuck and I was yelling and screaming. <laughs> wow. And my Grandpa, who was big, he came, 
with a hammer and a screwdriver. Okay, hold on, I'm almost done. I'm gonna come to you. And he had to take the door off the hinges. Can I draw a hammer? There you go. And he had to take the door off the hinges to let me out. Okay. <laughs> so he took the door right off the hinges and then I could get out of the bathroom. <laughs> anyway, let's look at yours and who wants to share? Oh, oh, Asa, tell me what's happening in yours quick. I'm helping a friend. With? I'm helping a friend. Friend with not mm, not be lonely. Oh, that's great. So your the problem was your friend was lonely. So you helped them feel welcome. That was wonderful. I love that. Okay, good work, Addie. Tell me about yours. One time I went to the beach and I wanted to get this crab and I tried to get it on my hand and it pinched me. <laughs> so I, I waved it around but it was still on it. So I put it in the water and, and wash, wished it away. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I'd be afraid to pick up the crab. You were brave. <laughs> that was good. Nice work. Emmy, tell me about yours. So, we, uh, so one day we were just taking my dogs for a walk and my dog Luna was big for her leash, and she just and she squiggled. Which it was she was small for her leash, so she squiggled out of it. Oh, wow! And then and so, she ran away, and then that's my dog. Did you ever I'm get like, her back? No. Did you ever get her back? Yes. Good. How did you get her She's back? Our house. Oh, good, good, good. We got no. a new leash. That's a, yeah. Oh, that's a great way to solve the problem. Nice work. Awesome. Okay. Isaac, I'm waiting for yours. Oh, Marvin, tell us about yours. Thank you, Emmy. Marvin, did you get stuck in the bathroom too? No, it was just one time uh, when we were moving. That was my that was my um, bedroom door, and um, I locked it. Oh, someone had to come let you out. I locked it from the inside, and um, I was outside. And did somebody come with keys? Yeah, um, doors always have keys. You know, you know those little holes I have. That yeah, door? yeah. Those are you know for some keys when when you put it on. When a door is locked on, on the other side in the room, you use the key and then that thingy, um, you know, turns and then it unlocks. The door will open and unlock. Very good. <gasps> Thank you for sharing, Marming. I don't know. I guess my grandpa had lost the keys. All right, let's look here. Oh, oh, twins, tell us about it. So we there's a shelf and we were wanting because we wanted to get something up there. <laughs> So what'd you do? We found a different way. <laughs> we um we found a stool and then our dad like picked us up and we got something. Oh, I like that solution. Asking for help from an adult. Probably <laughs> the best solution you can come up with. All right, love bugs. We are all done. I'm gonna skip to the very, very, very end, the end, 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 and say thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow for our um, math review, okay? Do you have any questions?